Welcome to Black Skylands, a top-down open-world pixel art action RPG that enters 1.0 on August 15th, aka today. Let's pop it under the Meg of the Microscope and see how Black Skylands handles my 15-part scoring system, starting with story. You are Ava, an ice-cold airship marshal tasked with visiting the small sky colony of Aspia, where pirate raids and swarm monsters have made life a living heck. Outgunned and outmanned, Ava quickly realizes she'll need to militarize Aspia's inhabitants and convert their agrarian infrastructure into a well-oiled war machine, if these quirky folk are to have any hope of survival. It's a decent premise, and Black Skylands 1.0 release further improves it by reimagining a few of the narrative's more cumbersome elements. Those raiding pirates, for example, were once trying to protect Aspians by repeatedly blowing them to bits. Even with these updates, however, Black Skyland's plot never really stood out to me as noteworthy, probably in part because its protagonist, Ava, comes across a bit bored and is arguably the game's least interesting character. Unlike Ron, who accidentally swapped bodies with his hairy test subject and now sells you bootleg energy powers when he's not busy housing nanners and forgetting your name. Finally, the game's simple text-based dialogue is okay, a little rough around the edges here or there, but ultimately painless to read through. Story aside, the remainder of Black Skylands is actually quite good, thanks in no small part to the game's fast and fluid, top-down, bullet-helly, Hotline Miami-style combat. And while I at first bemoaned the game's claustrophobic camera as it prevents you from seeing foes mere feet in front of you, I nonetheless learned to love the challenge it created. Depending on your armor, weaponry, energy power, and equipped amulets, Ava can go from one-hit kill stealth assassin superstar to an is-that-all-you-got bullet sponge that can tank up to 10 enemies at a time. But don't let that trick you into thinking Black Skylands is easy, as the game's later islands get increasingly fortified and formidable, so much so that you'll start getting one shot if you go in lacking the proper gear. But enough land lubbin, this is Black Skylands after all, and the game's airship combat is arguably its most interesting feature. Out maneuvering multiple enemies to stuff a barrage of explosive armament down their gullets before steam blasting to safety, hopping off the helm mid-flight to refuel, slapping down a couple repair kits, and then blasting right back into the fray to finish off those foes? Well, it's probably the most fun I've ever had mid-air multitasking. There's also a nice blend of aerial enemies, from speedy mine layers to swarm monsters to boardable super dreadnoughts that take up half the screen. As for non-combat, there's plenty to do and see in this interesting open world. That's right, when you're not busy reclaiming Aspian Islands from those pesky pirates, who beware will occasionally return to said liberated islands with a vengeance, you'll stumble upon NPCs in need of fuel or repair. You'll encounter strange relics linked to decent brain teaser puzzles, find resources and mods you can use to upgrade your guns, armor, and airship, enjoy some simple yet effective grappling hook platforming sections, and just bask in the game's pleasant aesthetic that's elevated by a day-night cycle and occasionally epic backdrops. But while you're free to fly just about anywhere anytime, note that each island sports progressively harder enemies. Luckily, Black Skyland's helpful user interface, which gets bonus points for Ava's sleek and immersive diegetic tablet, will say when you're getting in over your head. While the ensuing late game gear grind can turn into a bit of a, well, grind, the 1.0 release makes it easier than ever to upgrade your equipment on the literal fly. And the game's hypersonic load times, coupled with player-friendly fast travel locations, earn Black Skyland's high marks for playability, aka performance and player quality of life. Oh, and on the subject of quality of life, a quick shout out to the game's real MVP, your trusty pack mule, I mean pack moth, named Luna, who saves your ass no questions asked when you miscalculate a jump or just absentmindedly walk off your airship. More importantly, Luna will shuttle the resources you discover on land back to your ship's hold. As said, hold has limited space, of which a good bit is perpetually consumed by fuel canisters, repair kits, cannon ammo, etc. Inventory management will occupy a good bit of your time in Black Skylands. Now, you can upgrade your hold to hold more stuff, but each ship can only support limited weight for upgrades, and I found it made more sense to prioritize my ship's health, firepower, and fuel capacity rather than the amount of shit I could stuff inside it. Thankfully, the warehouse aboard Aspia's main base, the Floating Father Ship, has unlimited storage capacity anyway, making this a pretty moot issue. Before wrapping up with the style, I'll note that Black Skyland's boss fights are a bit of a mixed bag. Some feel a little too easy, others too hard, but the majority are just right or thereabout. As noted earlier, Black Skylands features a charming pixel aesthetic that's complemented by eye-popping hand-drawn skyboxes. I was a little less enamored with the game's pleasant if forgettable soundtrack as it didn't always line up with the on-screen intensity. I'm also equally conflicted on the game's sound design, as weapons are punchy and impactful, but other effects can grow repetitive to the point of annoying. Ultimately, Black Skylands is a good game that delivers commendable value thanks to a modest $20 price tag and 20 to 30 hours of fun. I'm giving it an aggregate mega score of 3.53 out of 5, and I'm happy to answer any questions you have about the game or my review. 
Until next time, this is Scope, and thanks for watching.